Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? Sorry boys and girls, this is not Robot. Actually here from uh, Vespa Motorsport, Scooter West in San Diego. We're gonna actually show you how to properly reinforce a clutch band on any vintage Vespa. This is a P200 clutch basket. You can tell by the seven springs. Uh, we sell a one size fits all band that comes pre-curled. It's gonna be a little bit long on the 125s and 150 clutch baskets because they're the smaller diameter. <clears throat> but the key thing is actually making sure you clamp this down really well. So you can kind of see here, I've already started clamping it. Tools required about three like decent vice grips. And I'll usually kind of clamp it right, you know, I don't know, if you kind of come down about a quarter of an inch from the top of the thing. And I'll show what we're going to do is we're going to tack each spot. Um, and then you want to do final welding once you actually put like the outermost plate in. Because the outermost plate needs to be in place when you do the final welding. Because if you keep these tabs up too much, they'll kind of you know, contort and pull in, push out, and then the clutch plates won't fit. When the clutch plates don't fit, that's a problem. You've probably noticed, actually, instances where the outermost plate is virtually impossible to fit over each one of these fingers. That's because, essentially, there's been so much, you know, angular velocity applied to each one of these tabs that the clutch has actually started to mushroom out. If you ever find yourself needing to, like, fight this plate to get it on, that's because, essentially, the clutch basket is, like, kind of expanded and really needs to be replaced. That's precisely what we're actually trying to avoid by welding this band in place. So I've got it started. I'll do a quick couple couple quick little tacks and then we'll cut out and we'll kind of come back once we're kind of finishing up. So just using a regular MIG welder, kind of put the thing at a nice angle. The key thing with welding is to always be comfortable. Now you should also probably wear gloves. I've never worn safety gloves in my life so why start now? Quick little tack, rotate it, quick little tack. I'll usually kind of alternate. Each tab I'll do a tack on the top, one on the top, two on the bottom. So that's going to be the two on the bottom. This one I'll just do one on the bottom. Now I'll kind of loosen the clamps, readjust, do the finished welding, show you the finished product before we actually finish it off. All right, there's the final weld, everybody. You want to use a little caution because it gets a little warm from welding. I guess I do use gloves. I just usually don't wear them. But the way I like to do it, and there's multiple ways to skin a cat, is I'll kind of stagger the welds. You know, two on the bottom, one on the top, one on the bottom, etc., all the way around. And that's where the band actually comes together. So you have to do a kind of solid weld, weld on all four corners there. And you notice, like I said, I've actually got the actual outermost clutch plate in here. And it's very critical that that thing drops in as smooth as that. And you'll take note to actually see the overall height of the clutch. So it's just below where that retaining clip goes. This isn't actually the perfect spot. So our welding is done at this point. Um, we usually will kind of clean up these welds. Uh, you can use a grinder. We've actually got a couple different belt sanders we have at the shop. So I'll just kind of show you kind of cleaning a couple of them up. And this isn't really that critical either. Uh, also, if you're going to TIG weld the thing, a lot of people are like TIG everything. I personally am more uh, get it done as quickly as possible as long as it's equally as effective. But certain ones you'll see TIG welded up and they won't use any filler metal. When they're TIG welding, all they're doing is like heating the band to the basket and not actually adding any filler metal. But once again, you know, we're dealing with old Vespas here. I mean, how critical does it have to be? So I'm going to clean a couple of these up and then we'll cut on out. Come on back after for the next step. Once again, you might want to wear safety glasses when you do that. I've actually got the eyelids of a camel, so it doesn't phase me. Uh, but there you go. There you see it all finished. You know, just kind of grind the tops off the welds, make them so they're nice and flush, so there's no interference when you go to put the clutch back in. That's pretty much all you got to do. That's good enough. So at this point, the thing's basically done, ready to assemble the clutch and install it. The one final thing that I meant to mention earlier but forgot to is now that this, now that there's very little interference, now that there's very little like void between like the fingers of the clutch basket and the actual band, a lot of times the actual uh, backing plate as well as like the two bottom most cork plates won't actually drop freely in there. This is actually off of the smaller diameter clutch, but it's good good difference you know you can kind of see the two differences the the six spring one versus seven spring one but it's the same principle a lot of times you have to take this over to the bench grinder and kind of remove a tiny bit of material like it you know in several different intervals to make it so this thing passes 
freely into there. If this thing actually doesn't drop freely into there, your clutch will never work right. We call this the bend jammer test. You never want to have to hammer or tap this down past that band. But so long as that actually drops freely in there, you're pretty much good to go. And also too, you always want to double check where that retaining ring goes and make sure you didn't like overheat any of the welds and just figure that at all. If you do, not that big a deal. You can with a you know, Dremel and a little cutoff wheel or whatever, get in that groove and kind of clean anything up. So, but this one's basically done. That's it. We sell the we sell the baskets as well as the bands, so you can actually do the welding yourself. And or we charge, I think, like 40, 45 bucks to actually weld this band on and get it all ready to install for you.